Uh, hello, we are Nano, um, the blockchain authenticator. My name is Abdelhamis Tran, and this is my partner, Andre Patikian. Um, the shoes that you see before you are latest a lot in the line of Yeezy's Ultra Boost line. They're the V2 Breads. Um, they are inspired and designed personally by one of my favorite rappers, uh, Kanye West. How much? Uh, retail wise, they can go anywhere between. They okay, retail for 220 each particular pair, so resell for 800 um, And it can go higher or lower depending on certain release dates and certain demands at the time. But despite the fact that both shoes look identical, one pair is in fact fake. It's a knockoff. And the, dis and the distinction between them is becoming harder and harder to distinguish. And as the average consumer, you can't tell just by looking at them. <coughs> High end fashion and luxury goods is a billion dollar industry that has been facing growing concerns in recent years. In recent years, actually, <clears throat> as more as luxury goods and high end fashion is becoming more sought out and more popular, the fraudulent goods market is also becoming more fruitful than ever. As there are more fakes, <clears throat> as there are more fakes being sold, and the differences between real and fake are becoming harder to distinguish. And <clears throat> with both. With both footwear and apparel being top 10 targets in count for counterfeiters, it is becoming increasingly important for companies and businesses to step up their security and for consumers to become more aware of the products that they are buying and spending potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars on. <clears throat> as, it stands, as it stands, the fraudulent goods market results in major loss of value, utility, and money for the stakeholders of luxurious brands. <clears throat> Designers and manufacturers lose uh, revenue and opportunity as uh, fake goods that are being purchased uh, lessen the exposure that the real brands and designers deserve and also um, add to their lessening uh, sales and declining sales. Furthermore, retailers and official resellers of luxurious brands um, ha now have to compete with undercutting competition that's selling fake goods for cheaper that's near distinguishable from the real ones. And at the same time, they have to deal with the potential of their reputation as reliable resellers to be jeopardized or to plummet. And at the end of the day, we the consumers are the ones that lose out, as the expensive pair of shoes that we think we own are now worth a fraction of what they should be. Our solution to the alarming fraudulent market industry is Nano, a system designed to help both the consumer and companies. <clears throat> Nano is an NFC chip that stores unique serial ID numbers for each individual good uh, for a company using blockchain technology, which is a, a secure and decentralized version of the internet. <clears throat> Our plan is to, uh, is to embed Nano within uh, Nano, an NFC chip, within the inner tags and decals and brands of designer, of designer goods and luxury goods. And connect it with our currently in development uh, multi-platform app and it all culminate together in order to give our users and consumers an easy way to verify the products that they have are in fact real and authentic. So the technology we'll be implementing is pretty complex, it's hard to understand, but we're going to be using the blockchain and we're going to use an application that's built on the blockchain called Ethereum, which is smart contracts, which will help these consumers be, feel more secure about their purchase. And within Ethereum, there's going to be a non-refundable token. So, and there'll be asset, uh, digital asset management. And this allows people to track their shoe after, or this allows people to track the certain shoe when it's been sold. So it gives a company um, access to see who like owns the shoe so it doesn't get into the wrong hands. And this way it gives the consumer access to the serial code that's associated with the sneaker. And the serial code is gonna be on the NFC chip. This chip has been implemented in cell phones since 2015. So that's gonna be easy to fix future models. So this will be easily accessible by just tapping it. And this will be done using an app that will be <coughs> with the um, sale of serial models. So I'm a, I'm a techie, just done getting blockchain. And I, get, I get the same, I get how you use it. Just who's who's going to enable the the, to the token getting on the chip, right? So use Ethereum to get a non-refundable token. Yes. But someone has to establish that on the chip as well. Mm -hmm. There has to be a chain of control there. Otherwise, you break security. Who's who's responsible for you as a service provider, or me as a manufacturer? It's going to be through Adidas, because or whatever manufacturer, whatever our target manufacturers at the time. We plan on making it clear to them that a lot of the responsibility for security relies on them. However, we plan on a company 
to help them as much as possible using our. Right, because it, it could be any any any, any person has a high end yeah. that they want to track, yeah. right? Absolutely. Um, I use your software to get the non refundable token. I could probably automate a process where I'm building my manufacturing process as they come off the manufacturing line to the chip and stuff. How big is the chip? Um, so NFC chips, they fit typically in. Um, they fit near the batteries of most phones. They're probably, most of them are smaller or small as the Apple logo, and they're very, very thin. Um, our plan is just to implement an NFC chip um, onto, uh, within or embedded within the designer tags and smaller pieces. Cool. Yes. Um, as it stands, uh, consumers, uh, big firms and consumers lose hundreds of million dollars each year to uh, fraudulent goods and scammers. And our solution to the problem is to give consumers themselves more power by giving them easy access to verification. Um, as a result, uh, it's, easy, it's going to be easy to implement and it's a simple system for them to use. Uh, also, on a, large, on a bigger scale than that, retailers and resellers will also be able to use our simple system um, and implement it to guarantee that they keep up their reputation as a reliable seller. And in the end, in the largest scale, designers and manufacturers will also be able to implement our systems because we'll be able to configure our code and our, our app for their, to suit their individual needs, as well as the function and overall size of our device. So similar projects that exist to are Chronicled and StockX. Chronicled is also built on the blockchain, but the difference between us and them is that they have people that are self proclaimed professionals that authenticate things for them that have already been released. So it wouldn't be through the manufacturer. And StockX is strictly sneakers. It's a marketplace for sneakers, which does the same thing. People send them, sho send them shoes. They authenticate it using their professionals. And people are supposed to believe that the shoe is authentic. And why our idea is better, because our because the other companies only have a one-time authentication. Ours stays with the sneaker or the product as long as possible. And it's easy. it can be accessed pretty easily because it could be through a phone through an app. Plus, we can extra second because yeah, go use that. Okay. And uh, and then it's often authenticated strictly through the manufacturer, so people would have that trust in the company. Um, as you can see, uh, <coughs> Nano will now result in higher uh, in a better overall uh, growing industry uh, for high end fashion. It will result in companies and firms having more money, more revenue. And it'll also result in them having less job losses, and also result in consumers themselves being able to buy more legit goods, resulting in growth of an already enormous industry as is. And recent years, the number the number of seizures from customs has been growing, but if we if we give if we take away the incentive for overseas for overseas manufacturers and scammers um, to ship their products overseas by uh, with effective consumer protection then they'll have less incentive, they'll have less reason, less money uh, to go overseas with their products. And Nano, as you can tell, is a solution designed to last. Um, it is supposed to be small and covert and only as noticeable as the designer or manufacturer wants it to be. And the intended idea is to provide more utility and more security for the good without compromising its initial design and or value. Um, we plan on working side by side and developing individual contracts for each firm um, in order and so that we can configure our software and our app to suit each firm's individual needs. And once we are successfully implemented once or twice with a firm, we can then whitewash and recode and reconfigure what works best for a different sort of, sort of industry. And as you can see, this is a simple breakdown of what we would do with um, our award money if we were if we were lucky enough to accomplish it. Um, as you can see, most of our expenses will come from R&D. Um, we'll spend the vast majority of it working. We've currently been talking and uh, working with uh, teams of programmers, developers, and people with software engineering experience in order to figure out what's the best uh, method of tackling our solution. Um, we will definitely spend a portion of the funds in order to, to accomplish the legal aspects of accomplishing our goal, uh, there might be licensing, certification, the various forms of insurance, um, patents, things of that nature. And we plan on spending the last uh, amount of the funds uh, on actual prototype models and testing um, for the various materials that luxury goods come with. Thank you. Excellent. Very good. Nice job, guys. Yeah.
We'll do five minutes of Q&A since we ran a little over. Then we already did a lot of Q&A already. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, Quick question. Your competition um, uh, chronicled. Yes. What's the difference between you and them? They're using, they're, they're having tags that get cut off. So yeah, so tags. the way their product works is they have a chip that's built into a tag, like you said, and yep. it's going to be attached to the sneaker. So most people don't really want to have a tag hanging around your shoes, so they're going to cut it off. So people can say that oh, it was authenticated by this company, but that can only go so far because it's been cut off. It could have been associated with a different shoe, yeah. but we could have put it. We could associate it with this shoe. Okay. There's no way of proving it that it was on that shoe. Because second shoes can be seen as long-term investments, depending on yeah. Yeah. depending on how you wear your shoes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, how much you want to pay? Do you, have, do you guys have a, a, some kind of unique algorithm that that is special sauce in here, or what prevents somebody else from who's your IP? Same thing. Yeah. Right. Any IP? Yeah. I think uh, I think the unique portion of our idea comes from the fact that one, we're trying to implement it with the most easiest user interface possible. Um, we're directing it for ease of ease, uh, ease of access for consumers. Um, but at the same time, it's unique in that it's <coughs> supposed to be permanent and highly customizable for uh, individual firms. So that's sort of our special take on it. And I guess it's more secure than let's say the stock X because. Although Chronicle is also built on the blockchain, this is the same idea that it will be secure because if someone theoretically were to hack, they'd have to go through all the servers that people have access to these yeah. serial codes. I'm not saying it's not hackable. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. Our idea is that your uniqueness, right? the thing that prevents somebody from copying you would be some unique idea that's yeah. hackable. <coughs> I think part of that is the permanence, the easy custom, uh, customizability, and the ease of access for consumers. Okay. I think all of those sort of give us our special take on this. Okay. So do you intend to, let's say, go to Adidas, New Balance, are, they, are you going to work with them and why would they work with you when they can implement these chips just as we have barcodes on tons of items and then they, anybody can take their sneaker, put the barcode in on a website and say, yeah, these are real or not. Well, how do you get well barcodes well the thing about barcodes is that they're they're a clunkier form of protection right um, they've definitely uh, definitely in recent times especially you've seen thieves or scammers try to mimic barcodes and or fake barcodes whereas the ours is since the consumer has easy access to it and is able to do it that's a bit larger user base so it's a more secure system because we have more guarantees that so it's do you intend to sell the chip to Adidas or yeah we plan, we plan to partner with them in order to so you're going to partner them. with all the sneaker manufacturers provide the chips they'll implement the chips and sold somewhere and then you're going to create the the electronic system yes within Adidas that's, that's the, the, the yeah that's the goal okay. Um, so, so to this point, have you um, have you actually had any conversations with potential, um, you know, high-end you know, retailers or manufacturers? Um, to get any feedback? So far, we've I've only talked. Uh, so far, we've only talked to lower end, sort of more local brand names. Um, a couple of I know a couple of my friends and a couple of his friends on this campus have many designer companies and graphic design teams that they're trying to establish their brand. And so we talked about uh, and so in our conversations, we sort of discussed with them for future reference, like how, how viable do they think something like this would be. Mm -hmm. And even though now most of the brands aren't worth very much at this point, they definitely all see the utility in future security. Yeah. Yeah, one comment, like a potential challenge that I could see is adoption into the manufacturing process, right? So if you ask me as a retailer, I gotta embed this in my process. In some cases it may be easy and harder. That's why people yeah. do attach because it's easier, right? Yeah. So I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking a lot like how easy or hard is it to put a chip like in the soles? Or like, I don't think that uh, yeah. like on a tag is going to be the most logical place. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Then, yeah, but you got to, that's all fun. Our idea is to yeah. sort of implement it on sort of um, You want to put yeah, some place yeah, yeah. that's embedded because otherwise they rip it out. Yeah, yeah so. But then yeah. nobody's going to buy it. Yeah, so then it can't be authenticated. Yeah, yeah so one right of the there. major points is that it's going to be, well, one, NFC chips are inherently small. But that's what I mean by embedded though, it's ripped out, you can see it. If, you, if yeah. it's a tag yeah. that you can just cut yeah. off, you don't so know what's in the first place. It's probably going to be able to run your iPhone over it. Yeah, to trust that. And then it'll come up on a list. Yeah, I'm thinking they could rip it out. These shoes, the sole, they're built by smaller pellets and they're pressed and steamed. Together. So we'd embed it, we'd ask them to embed it in, within the product. So if they were to um, rip the shoe open, they'd be wasting the retail if they're Yeah, no, I get that. Once they see it, it's broken. Be but that's the whole thing. I think figuring out one of your challenges, I, I'm not looking for the answer now, because yeah, yeah. it's just thing you have to figure out how, if I'm going to be a, a user of this technology, at some point it's like, how easy is it for me to adopt this? I'm going to have to change on the manufacturing process, but yeah. they have to certain amount of cost. Yeah. That makes it tough. Yeah. So I know I work at some retail companies who do security, and even NFC chips in 
high-end security, like you know, if you need a Marcus and you have high end, they don't use them that much because it's just expensive and yeah. whatnot. So um, there is a little bit of still adoption in that space now. Yeah. All right, John. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I actually have two questions, or well, maybe one question and a comment. Um, first question was um, around the, the you, I think you mentioned somewhere in your presentation around um, you're going to de incentivize over time um, you know, the, the counterfeiters from yeah. developing product. You know, but I couldn't help but think about this when I was reading it last night that there actually is a market for uh, knockoff products. Yeah. Like, a real Absolutely. market where yeah. people yeah. are desiring right. yeah. the Louis Vuitton that they can the only pay 30 bucks. Louis Vuitton knockoffs. Yeah. Right, right. Right. So, you know, uh, so I'm just, it's a comment that, you know, cannibalizing a, a viable market um, is something, you know, for these high end brands, because some people actually want yeah. the knockoff. Because it creates a little allure of what's yeah, real. What's exactly. Great. And that's all they can afford. They can't yeah. afford to spend yeah. $600 on their shoes. You might want to so, so, the knockoff of it. Yeah, yeah, maybe, absolutely. maybe. Good point. Good point. And then la last just comment is that, you know, I see, I mean, I, I come from the biopharmaceutical industry, and we have requirements around serialization of products. Yes. And for bigger purposes, I mean, because making sure that we don't get the wrong drugs into, you know, in, into yeah. people's hands. And so um, something to think about, because you know, when I think about difference maker, and I think about, okay, the value add, right? Um, I mean, obviously, this is very important, and this is a, a, a big, uh, uh, you know, revenue uplift for, uh, for companies. But when I think about the, some of the value of a, uh, the extension of a product like this for biopharmaceuticals and actually how it can affect people's health and well-being, it's another interesting aspect. Of it. Yeah, that's what we were looking into actually, was like have a certain serial code for a person so once they check in, they have the right drug that they're prescribed. Yeah. But this was just a summary. Yeah, so no, that's fine. Just, yeah. I could see lots of uses. There's definitely more applications. Yeah. Okay, awesome. thank you. Very good job. Thank you, guys. Yeah. 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 Which one's the real one? Those are real. Those are the fake ones. And and really? Are you sure? I can. I can fit yeah. these. Can you guys? Remember? <laughs> Who's gonna pay? <laughs> <laughs> I tested this. Out. <laughs> <laughs> like I think it's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna pay hundred dollars for that. Each their own. Yeah. That's just me. Don't touch your shoes. Don't touch your shoes. One of You're using sneakers as or shoes as an example. Yeah. In your pitch, use the word product. Right, because it's a product, because it could be anything, right? It could, yeah. It could be yeah. Right? Yeah. It could be it, it could be electronic goods. It could be a ton of different things. Absolutely. Thank you, great. Thank you, guys. Thank you.